Okay, um, so hi everyone, or no one I guess, depending on <laughs> how this video goes. Um, I'm Meg, so I started the Time for Tea page on Instagram that you might have seen, um, or I've got like a work Twitter as well, um, so you may have come across me on there. I'm a first year genomics STP trainee um, based in Birmingham, so there's quite a lot of us actually, there's two genomics and two cancer genomics, um, so it's quite nice really, you've got quite a big group of us to lean on, <laughs> I guess. And I just wanted to do this time for tea just with me um, before I start with any of the other trainee videos, just to kind of give a little bit of information about what I want these videos to be like and what I'm hoping people can get out of them and then give a little bit of information on my background and my experience of the application process and just a few reflections on um, the STP so far. Obviously I have only been doing it for a few months now um, but I think in a way that's quite useful because I've still got my um, thoughts about what it was going to be like, like I've still got them relatively fresh in my mind from applying last year. Um, so the reason I've kind of set this up is because when I was applying at least, I so I've applied twice and I think I went to about four or five open days between both of the years that I was applying to. Um, I read loads of information on the National School website, trawled through the curriculum, <laughs> spoke to STPs at more general Q&A sessions, but I didn't really have much of an idea of what they got up to day to day. Um, and for me personally, like this wasn't a big issue because I applied for genomics and cancer genomics and they're quite similar. So I didn't feel like I was spreading my application too thin. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, but I know for other people that come from a degree that's a bit more broad, maybe like biomedical science or something like that, um, that it can be a bit difficult to choose one specialism sometimes and you don't want to spread your application too thin because then you might not get an interview for either. Um, so I thought I'd do these videos to kind of chat with other people and see what they are doing in their day to day so that you can decide which one sounds best for you um, and which you kind of want to direct your application towards. So yeah, hopefully <laughs> these will help with that. Um, but equally, if you want to hear a little bit more about what I specifically get up to um, or more information on the application process itself, I could try to do them or if there's anything glaringly obvious that you think that I'm missing out of these videos, please just message me and let me know um, and I'll try to incorporate that as well. So just a bit on my background, I did my undergrad in medical genetics and my master's in human and molecular genetics based both at the University of Sheffield. Um, I love it in Sheffield, I just love the city, it's the nicest place ever. Um, and I was a tutor there for four years, so I taught um, children maths and English. I uh, didn't actually teach any science, so I couldn't really use like the scientific side of that. But it's really key to kind of pick out the skills that you've learned, so like leadership, confidentiality, communication from your previous jobs or previous experiences and relate that to the NHS and to the STP and think about where you could really bring them into your role and which ones are really like important. So yeah, I was a tutor for four years there and I loved it, um, but I didn't really have much in the way of hospital experience. I had two short placements with the Sheffield Diagnostics Genetics Service um, from my masters. But other than that, I didn't really have hospital experience at all, so it is possible. Um, but obviously, any experience you can get would be really useful. I, as I said, got on the second time round. Um, I applied in the first, in the, like the first time I applied was the last year of my undergrad. 
um, and I wasn't expecting to get on. Um, so I did my masters, got some more experience and then applied second time round. The first time I passed the tests but didn't get an interview and then second time I obviously passed both. Um, but we had an interview with two people from our department um, rather than an assessment centre and I think for me personally that was a huge benefit. I think an assessment centre would have stressed me out so much <laughs> and I think in an interview with just two people you're able to build up a little bit more of a relationship with them um, and yeah just discuss things a little bit more naturally. Um, so yeah I'm sure you all know the application process but if you wanted me to do a video on that I could do that too. Um, and just some of the reflections so far, I really loved it. I think um, the SCP is just perfect for people that want to use what they've learned in their degree, um, but directly to benefit patients quicker than you might do in research. So I wanted to see things like actively benefiting rather than thinking like, okay, in three years down the line this may be really useful fair play to everyone that can do that i don't think i can do that personally myself and i also don't like worms or flies so <laughs> a lot of research kind of in genetics does revolve around that um so yeah i think this is the perfect fit for me you really feel like you're part of something that's helping people and that's just very rewarding I think. So, so far I've done my genetics rotation, I finished that at the end of December um, last year. So did all of the competencies and the assessments for that. It was a lot of virtual learning but it was really well organised um, by my training supervisor and then the supervisor for genetics. And yeah, that all went without a hitch pretty much. And then we had the virtual uni block in October. So the whole of October was spent um, doing the university learning, which I found a little bit harder to motivate myself for just because it was virtual. Um, so I was doing it in my bedroom. I'm in my bedroom at the moment. I find it sometimes a little bit more difficult to motivate myself compared with when I'm in the office. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be able to go to Manchester for future teaching. It sounds really fun. You get to meet loads of other STPs, so I would really enjoy going. Um, but they did the best with what they had. Um, and hopefully if in future university blocks, they do need to do a bit of virtual uni, some of the issues that they had um, just with trying to like streamline it and stuff will have been ironed out um, for the future. And then another thing that I spent the first few months of the SCP doing was trying to make the most of the virtual conferences. So with everything not being able to happen in person, a lot of conferences have moved online. Um, so I've joined a few from places that I wouldn't have been able to join um, otherwise. So I think one I joined was hosted in America, so I would have never flown out there usually. Um, and it's also been great for getting speakers from across the world as well to join conferences and give their, um, like, present their research. Those are the words I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, I joined one uh, the Welcome Genome conference centre as well on epigenomics and that was really interesting. So yeah, I think a big thing at the moment is try to make the most of it. There are free webinars out there that you could join and then you could talk about that in your application. So like despite not being able to go to certain things, you have joined conferences to keep your um, knowledge like up to date and stuff. Yeah, hopefully that's given a little bit of information on me 
Um, if you have any other questions, just, as I said, message me. Um, and hopefully see you, kind of, <laughs> um, for future videos. And yeah, stay safe.